Hi, how's it going? My name is James Traley. I am at James underscore films on Instagram. You can see some of my stuff scrolling by on your screen right now. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Uh, so this channel is a chance for me to basically go through my workflow, give you some tutorials, some tips and tricks, kind of show you my own workflow and in an effort to basically inspire you. Uh, as you go through and define your own workflow. To start off this series, I wanted to go through a picture that you guys really liked a lot recently on my Instagram, right here next to me. This picture is shot on my campus at Princeton University at a place called Blair Arch. And it's a really cool arch, it has this really huge clock in the middle of it. For this picture, I basically was inspired by the star trail images, which is basically a composite image where you'll just take a ton of pictures uh, of the night sky, or you just leave your shutter of your camera open for an hour or two, and basically the stars will be spinning around Polaris, which is the North Star, it stays fixed relative to us, and you'll get this effect where all the rest of the stars are just spinning around it. So I kind of wanted to have that juxtaposed with the clock, and I thought that would have an interesting effect where you get this perpetual swirling motion that really draws your eye into the frame and draws your eye right to that clock in the middle of the frame. So to start off, I just wanted to talk about the settings for this image. Um, when I was going to take this picture, uh, I noticed that there's actually someone walking into the frame here, so I didn't want that person to be blurred, but at the same time I needed to be able to have my shutter open long enough to be able to capture enough light, because I was shooting this quite late at night, I think I shot this around 10 or 11 p.m., so it was obviously dark at that point in time, except for some lights. There's a really nice glow from the tunnel, and I wanted to incorporate that into the image to also kind of draw your eye into the frame. And there was an, enough light on that staircase too, leading up to it, that kind of drew your eye down to where that person was walking. So I had a, a pretty quick shutter speed. I did a half second. So just, I didn't want that woman to be motion blurred at all as she was walking. This is the initial image that I got back after shooting it. It was quite dark. You can't really see much from the sky. When I shot this image, I kept a careful eye on the histogram, which you can see up in the right hand corner of my image up here. A very helpful trick when you're shooting pictures is to not have this graph at all pushed up against either side. So if you're way pushed up against the left side, you're going to be losing a lot of information in the shadows. If you're too far to the right side, you're going to be losing all of that information in the highlights. I tend to try to keep this as balanced as possible. I didn't do as well with this one. As you can see, a lot of my data in the image is kind of pushed over to the left side, so it's quite dark. So I shot this with the camera that's actually filming me right now, which is the Sony a7R II. This image I really messed up a bit too, but I kind of wanted it to be a challenge for me to kind of really dig into the settings and see if I could save this image. So one of the first things you notice, if you just look in the basic adjustments, is I ramped my exposure up almost two stops. That's what it looked like uh, before the exposure adjustment. And then I brought it all the way up to, I think I had it around like 1.7, 1.8. Also, if I just completely reset this image, you'll see this is what it originally looked like. My framing was also kind of odd too. So one of the things I did is just cropped in. A couple other settings, I dropped down the highlights because like I mentioned before, I was kind of careful about overexposing them. So I just dropped those down, not too much. Brought up my shadows again, just to bring back some of that information that I lost as well. This kind of helps out the exposure increase as well. Just brings back some of that information in the shadows. Um, brought back the whites, just because there are some that are a bit overexposed here. You can see, especially around the lamp, um, all of the lamps for that matter really, they're kind of overexposed, so I brought that down. And then just lifted the blacks a little bit too. Um, just because it adds a bit more detail back into the building itself, which I thought was nice. Um, one thing I noticed when I was actually uh, increasing a lot of the exposure adjustments, a lot of the shadows, was that the building was starting to smooth out a bit. So if I kind of, if I take away this clarity adjustment, you can see the building looks pretty smooth, which I didn't really like as much because it is a, it looks a lot like a castle and I kind of want a, a bit of that grittiness to the building. So I, I brought up the clarity just a bit, which I usually don't like to do too much. Um, because it kind of, if you overdo it, so if I ramp the clarity up all the way, it just looks really fake and really weird. So I, I'm very careful with this adjust, adjustment. I really don't like to overdo it. Um, and it's definitely very easy to get a bit too uh, happy with that slider and kind of push it to either extreme. Uh, going the other way, you can actually also mess up the image too. If you just bring it all the way down, you, it looks really dreamy, but a bit too dreamy as everything starts getting really smoothed out. Um, so usually if I'm going negative with it, I won't go beyond maybe negative 8 or 10. 10 is even kind of pushing it sometimes too. So for the sake of this image, I had it at 15. I also brought down the saturation of the image as well. So if I just bring this back to where it was uh, originally, you can see there's a bit too much green and yellow that I didn't really like. So I brought back down that uh, saturation. And then what happens is when you decrease the saturation, um, it does it uh, globally for the entire image. 
So then what I did is actually brought back the vibrance, which specifically targets uh, the midtones of the image, um, which I think is a bit more generous with your coloring, so it doesn't overexpose uh, the colors in certain parts of the image, which I think is nice. Uh, in terms of the tone curve, I didn't really do too much adjustment here, which I usually do a lot more, but this image kind of was pretty flat to begin with, so there really wasn't too much I needed to um, do in terms of the contrasting of the image. Um, so I, I just did a, I guess you can call the nest curve. I, I usually put about uh, five points on here. Uh, I put one at the midtones, uh, two in the highlights, and then two down here with the shadows. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll lift this bottom most point up just a little bit. And what that does is it kind of makes the, the blackest pixels of your image slightly off black, so it raises that up a bit. You get this kind of cool filmic cinematic look. Um, but for this image, I, I didn't really feel like that was too necessary. Um, did some pretty minor adjustments in the HSL. Uh, I really liked the colors already kind of coming out of it, and I knew I was going to do some more corrections in Photoshop later. So I kind of left it as is. The one thing I did do was uh, raise the luminance of the blue up quite a bit. Um, with split toning, split toning is also another one that you don't want to overdo. It's very easy to just completely oversaturate certain parts of it. But if you do just a little change, like usually I'll keep the saturation around 10, um, and then add a slight bit of color. So for the highlights, I already noticed that they're quite yellow with this golden tint. So I wanted to add a bit of uh, a bit more, just kind of push that just a bit more. You get a bit more punchiness uh, with the split tones. So I added in just a little bit more, just a little bit more touch to it. For the shadows, I did the same thing. It's also kind of bluish. I wanted that kind of cold hue to it. So I added in um, a bluish uh, a color. And usually what I do when I start making this adjustment is go to the most extreme part of it already. So I add in just the max amount of saturation almost just to kind of see what color I like before bringing it back. So I didn't really like this turquoise-ish color here. And I thought this was kind of bordering on too purple. So I found it right in the middle. I'm like, okay, I like that kind of blue. And then I just dialed the saturation back of it. So I kept it around, I guess like, I had it at eight or something like that. Uh, 10, yeah. Um, I'd encourage you to do the profile lens corrections here as well. It just adjusts your image to whatever lens that you're using, whatever camera that you're using. So if I turn this off, you can see the image is kind of bulging out of it because this was shot on a wide angle lens at around 16 um, millimeters. So it is a bit fisheye, so it kind of corrects that a bit. You can see it, it just makes the image a bit more normal looking, <laughs> basically what it actually looks like in real life. Um, and I didn't do any adjustments in the camera calibration. Um, so once I'm done with that, usually what I go to is edit, Sorry, usually after that what I go to is photo, edit in, and then edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. And what that will do is it will open up your Photoshop app. Uh, if you're on the new Creative Cloud, it does this, and it will basically have a seamless dynamic link between your Photoshop and your Lightroom. So this will load in a second. And this is the final image that I ended up exporting out to Instagram. I just wanted to go through some of these effects and talk about how I went about doing everything. So if I just turn these off, this is the image that I brought into from Lightroom. So basically I use Lightroom to do any color corrections, any brightening of the image, any fixing of colors that are a bit overexposed or kind of too saturated. Um, I get an initial adjustment in Lightroom and then I bring it over to my Photoshop app. There are a lot of tricks in Photoshop that you can do to actually bring back a lot of really cool color in your image. So I always shoot raw. So in general, my images are pretty flat. So let me just turn off all of these really quickly. Uh, I do need this, actually. I did a selective color adjustment. I can just turn this on and off. I was noticing it was a bit too yellowish and too green on the building. So I wanted to get rid of that. So if I just open up the selective coloring, the main change I made was in the yellows, where I dropped down the yellows a bit. And then in the greens, where I did quite a bit of adjustments too, to kind of dial back the green of the grass, because I thought it was kind of taking your eye away from the subject of the image, which is this person walking up the stairs and the clock. So I did that, and then I also did a color balance as well to kind of add a bit more coolness to the image. Um, and then one of the next things that I did was actually draw in this mask, you can see it over here, to actually cut out this whole sky that was here above the building, because I didn't think it was particularly too interesting, and it wasn't really drawing your eye into any particular part of the image. There's a lot going on at the same time in this image. You have all these lamps and all these lights everywhere. There really isn't a focal point just yet, I feel like. It's kind of a lot going on, a lot competing for your attention. So I wanted to add that swirly star trail in to really draw your eye into the image. And there's a couple ways to cut out the sky. It's kind of hard for a dark image because the colors of the sky are matching a lot with this roof here. So if I was just gonna go do um, an adjustment with the magic wand and select stuff, it's kind of picking up a bit too much of 
certain areas here, it thinks that this is the same color as the sky, so I, I didn't like to do that. So what I actually did is individually quickly went through with the pen tool, so that's this tool right here, and just kind of clicked along the roof, um, making points along the way, and then finally I made a selection. I won't do this now because I already did this, but I basically zoomed in, took the time to go through the entire image, making clicks and clicking along with the pencil, and then I made a selection, and then I made that my mask. Once I masked out the sky, I allowed this picture to come in. So this is a picture that I got from Unsplash. It is a great site for photography that is open source, it's royalty free to use, which means that you can use it without having any copyright issues coming up with your pictures. Unfortunately, I took this picture and it was about like 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside, it was pretty cold, so I didn't really want to spend too much time out with my camera taking pictures. So for the purposes of this, I just used a picture from Unsplash. I definitely want to go out again when it's warmer and uh, when I don't have to freeze to death to take this picture again and actually get the star trails. If we look at this image, it kind of looks way too purple for me. And if you remember that original sky was quite blue. So I do want to keep true to that. So what I did is actually added a color balance layer to bring back the blue color uh, of the image. And if I just go into this quickly, I adjusted the midtones, pushed the yellows a bit more to blue, uh, and then went into the highlights, and then just made a slight adjustments here, brought the red slightly more to cyan. Quick adjustment there, which isn't too bad. I really like how this image looked in general. I think it draws your eye a bit more towards that clock that you see in the image. Um, but I feel like it still didn't have that magical effect to it. So what I actually did is um, use this great tool that was originally developed, I think, by Google, called the Nick Collection. And there's a great little preset package in here called Color Effects Pro 4. So what I did is I went into this. It's a really great little program that has all kinds of um, little features that you can use and you can throw over your image and then adjust them however you want. Uh, there's a couple in particular that I use for my own image. And I love this feature where you can kind of drag across uh, and see the before and after in real time, exactly what you're doing. I always do this pro contrast filter usually. So if I just turn this on and off, I think this just kind of makes your colors and lights just pop a bit more. Um, you can adjust some of these settings. So I usually will increase the dynamic contrast a little bit. If I bring this back down, you can see the, the building looks a bit flat. The correct contrast just adds a bit more punchiness to it. Uh, it's basically doing like a bit of localized dodging and burning on the image. And then I usually just slightly bring up that correct color. If I kind of overdo it, the building looks sick and green for some reason. So just keep it very minimal and just kind of bring it a little bit up. Um, usually I like to add another filter and this is kind of where the magic comes in and where you really get that beautiful kind of soft glow to the image. And I go to this sunlight thing here and you can see that's way overdone. This looks a bit too fake for my taste. Um, it also looks way too warm and keep in mind this was shot at night so it's kind of cold. So what I'll usually do is increase the light temperature bar over to where it's a bit colder. So I like around here around 6700 Kelvin. I think that's pretty good. Maybe bring back the brightness a little bit so it's not as blown out in those highlight regions. Maybe increase the contrast. I just A lot of this is kind of your own judgment, just moving sliders up and down and looking at the image to kind of see what works for your image. So I think that this works to keep the brightness up a bit. And then that saturation level looks pretty good. So if I do uh, compare before and after, you can already see that the colors are just kind of punching a bit more. And you have this kind of a bit more magical glow, especially to those uh, highlight regions uh, around where the lamps are. So it's it, look, it looks really nice. Um, and usually one of the last filters I'll add in is this brilliance and warmth filter. And this can just give you a bit more cold uh, glow in the shadows. You can see I'm adding a bit of cool tones to some of the shadows there. Um, you can also increase the saturation a slight bit. Again, this is kind of your own judgment. Um, I like that a little bit more. You kind of have that cool golden glow from the, the lights. Um, and then I will just adjust the warmth a bit here too. I think that's pretty good. So I, I would hit okay at this point and add in my adjustments, but I'll just basically, I already did this before, so I'll just show you what ended up happening. So uh, these are our initial adjustments to get to this point. And then I did that Color Effects Pro to just take it that extra step and add that little bit of extra magical glow to it. Um, and then as soon as I save this image, it actually live updates it in Lightroom. So here's the original image we started with, and then it saves this image from Photoshop, which is the one that I was live updating um, from Photoshop. So if I hold these side by side, let me use this as the reference photo. Here's my initial photo. I'll just completely reset this as well. So this is the photo I started with on the right. 
I ended up getting to this image on the left here. So quite a big adjustment here and it goes to show you that you can save really any image that you take. Just go in and mess around and keep editing and see what works for you. Give it a shot, don't give up on that image. Take some time with your editing. It's not something that necessarily will always happen immediately too. What I like to do is start editing an image, save it out, go to bed for the night, wake up the next morning, and then look at it again with fresh eyes. And you just come at it with a very different perspective and you might think of a different way to actually go about editing your image uh, to actually make it look really cool. Please comment below what you thought of this. Give me some suggestions for other tutorials that you'd like to see. Check out my Instagram and send me one of the pictures that you see on here that you want me to do a breakdown of. Happy to go through any one of these pictures. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm gonna be posting a lot more videos soon. I've been procrastinating a lot on doing these because I've just been so busy with schoolwork. Have an awesome day. Cheers.